We're, um, we have a theme for 2021. Anybody like to remind me what it is? How did you guess? You're very attentive, good man. I can see why you're on the front row. Plant or plant? Plants, plants. Plants. Kiwis, plant. South Africans. Plant, 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 plant. <laughs> All right, theme is, I'm from Kiwa Valley in Victoria, country Victoria, plant. All right, if you meet some of my rallies, you'd really hear an Aussie speak. <laughs> plant. Based out of Matthew chapter 13 and verse 31 and 32. Come on, let's remind ourselves of what it's about. It says, Jesus tells them a parable, the kingdom of heaven. He's describing what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's like a mustard seed, something tiny, which a man took and planted in the field. Though it is the smallest of seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants, plants, and becomes a... Everyone say tree. No, not a tree. A tree becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Is there one other verse to come? No, that's it. Birds come and plant. I might as well just pack up and go home. What do you say? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Okay, come on, help me. I'm just thinking about that roast coming up for lunch. No, no, I promise you I'm not breaking the fast with a lunch. That would be the worst thing. I'm not breaking the fast. <laughs> that makes sense. All right. Come on, concentrate. Squirrel. The kingdom of God is like a what? A seed. Now, the fact is they were imagining something more like a rock. But Jesus says, no, the kingdom starts with a seed. Now, we often think of the kingdom of God as something external to us. You think about a kingdom, you tend to think of something that's external to us. It's sort of out there. Uh, And once Jesus was asked, when's the kingdom of God coming? And his answer was, he says, that the kingdom of God is where? It's within you. The kingdom of God is within you. In fact, let's have a quick look at it. Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. Once, um, on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. In another version says, the kingdom of God is within you. Who believes that today? Kingdom of God is in you. And it comes to you in the form of a seed. When you ask Jesus into your life, when you believe in Him, A seed, the kingdom of God enters into your life in the form of a seed. 1 Peter 1.23 talks about about Jesus, about the kingdom of God being a seed. For you have been born again. Anyone here been born again? Not of perishable seed, but of what? Imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. You have, you know, you're born the first time by natural seed. You're born spiritually by a imperishable seed. The Bible says, talks about a divine seed. We are partakers of the divine nature. And it starts small, but let me tell you, it's not insignificant. All right, you've got the kingdom inside you. That seed has incredible power. This is a little bit of review. We looked at this last week. How many know that a concrete footpath, a thick, four-inch thick concrete footpath can get absolutely messed up by someone planting a seed nearby? Eventually, that seed has the power to grow through and re- reform and reshape everything around it. And that's what the kingdom of God does in you. It grows and it reforms you. And you think, that could never change. That could never break in my life. But you've got the kingdom of God in you. And it's growing. And it's, as it does, it's forming you into the, into the character of Christ and making you to become what you're destined to become. Does anyone here believe that today? So the the seed doesn't stay small, though. It doesn't stay an itty-bitty little bitty seed. But the Bible says it becomes a what? Not a tree, a a tree. (laughs) A tree. It actually says birds will come and find shelter in your branches. You will become something of permanence. It's something that brings life and shelter and security to 
others. You might say this morning, well, you must be joking. I'm having trouble propping myself up, let alone to become a tree that others could benefit from. Well, let me tell you, that's what God wants for you and I. So how does this happen? I'll tell you right now, it doesn't happen in isolation. Got the kingdom in me, now I'm just going to go and I'm going to become a monk. I'm going to go and become a spiritual hermit and isolate myself and just get all spiritual. No, it doesn't happen that way, far from it. So this morning, I want to show you how that little seed grows into a tree. You ready? Psalm 92, verses 12. Let's read it. Psalm 92, verse 12. It says, The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Lebanon is famous for its cedar trees. In fact, I think we've got a picture of a cedar tree. Look at that. Can you see the tree? Boom, boom. Never mind. That's a cedar tree. And Lebanon is famous for its cedar trees. They're magnificent. How many of you can imagine plenty of birds and plenty of shade and there's plenty of shelter and security in that thing? What an amazing tree. So that thing started as a little seed planted, but it become a, now I'm saying, why, you know why I'm saying tree. <laughs> it's become of something significant, something that birds can shelter in. Make no mistake this morning, that's the end game. God wants to make you into a tree. Now let, let me rephrase that. He doesn't want to make you into a tree. He wants to make you like a tree. Just thought I'd make that clear. He wants to make you like a tree. Something that other people can benefit from. Other people can find shelter and security. And so, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. Well, they'll, grow, they'll grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Verse 13. Planted in the house of the Lord... They will flourish, everyone say flourish, in the courts of our God. So planted and flourished. In between planting and flourishing is what? The house of the Lord. Planted, not just anywhere, but in the house of the Lord, they will flourish. The way for that seed to be watered and fed that's the seed of the kingdom of God planted in you. If it's to become a tree, that is, is for you to be planted yourself in a place that supplies enough water and nutrients for this little seedling to become a tree. The seed is planted in you. Who believes that this morning? But then you must plant yourself where that seed can get enough nourishment and water and, and nutrients for it to become the tree it was destined to be. We've got a little example up here this morning. I promise I'll try not to make too much of a mess. And these aren't trees, they're just plants. You get, the, you get the picture. I'll put this one down here. So we've got a nice bit of... Well, let me t let's just pretend it's, it's an oak tree. <laughs> Everyone knows it's mint. Who likes mint? Right, we've got, we got a plant here. Let's, let's pretend it's a tree for a moment. Now, because it's about what I could put my hands on quickly, but the fact is, if, 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 it's a palm, if it's a tree of any kind, how many of you know it's nice in the pot like that, but how many of you know for it to grow and to, for it to become a tree, it can't stay like that, right? What has to happen? It has to get planted. So here's what has to happen. That needs to get planted in something bigger. You with me? And deeper and all the rest of it. <laughs> Who can see that this morning? And so, even though we have a seed in us and it's growing, we have to plant ourselves, we have to get planted in something bigger than just us. We have to plant ourselves in something which is going to supply nutrients and water to enable a tree to become all that it's destined to be. He who is planted in the 
house of the Lord shall flourish. You can't become like a tree unless you plant it. You cannot be fruitful unless you plant it. And that's not talking about the center point church building or any building. It's talking about having a, a worship context in your life, a, a praise context, a, a fellowship context, a, a hearing of the word regularly context being taught, a, a regular ongoing context. You don't, you, something that you just don't attend or you just visit, but there's a consistency to it. There's a stability to it. There's a groundedness to it. You're planted. That's what it means. You're planted. It's central to your life. It's a lifestyle. You put your roots down. And it's going to keep you when the cares of life try to knock. It's not when the cares of life come. And how many know the cares of life come? It's not going to knock you off course. It's not going to get you off track. Why? Because you are planted. Your roots go down deep. You're planted. Planted. I mean, the trees take time. And for them to ever become what they're called to become, they have to be planted. So how do I become planted in the house? First thing is, I've got to let God plant me. I have to let God be the master planter. There's another set of hands at work in my life. This is, you see, God, it's God's will for you to be planted in his house. Who believes that? And, and not just in the house of God, but in a house of God. Recognize that he has something to do with the planting. This is not just a consumer choice. You know, just because, you know, I'm going to that church just, just because it's close, or I like the choir, um, I like the chairs, I like the drummer's hairstyle, because guess what, the church might move, the choir might cease, we might buy new chairs, and the drummer might lose his hair. Then what are you going to do? There has to be a sense of, God has planted me here. There's something of God in this. There's, you have to allow for the sovereignty and the direction. The steps of the good man and woman are ordered by God. There's a sense that God has brought me to this place. He has planted me here. This is not just consumer driven. This is about God has put me here. Why? Because he wants to grow me into a tree. He's doing something in my life. Think of my own life. I'm not here in this church just because it was the best option because it probably wasn't. No offense. I'm not just here because it was the best option. Nick and I are here because we have an absolute conviction and belief that God has planted us here. Imagine if I was living all my life, every day, every year here, looking for a better option. How many of you know I would be not much use to you as your pastor if I saw this just as a stepping stone to something else? But I'm planted here. You see, if I get you here, I've got to keep you here. I might be offering 8% tithes. I might promise to put you on the roster. I might offer you a joyride on the back of my motorbike. But if I get you here, I have to keep you here. Whereas my Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians 12, 18, that God sets the members in the body. God sets the members in their place. And what he sets, when he sets us, we've got to sit where he sets us. Are you hearing this this morning? Now, hear me well. This doesn't mean that we can never leave. Or circumstances might change. Or, you know, you're just going to, all right, you've walked in that door. Good, you're here till I take you out in the box. But there is a settledness. It's not happening every year. It's not like God can't make up his mind. I think I'll plant them here. Oh, what do you reckon, Gabriel? Oh, no, oh I think I'll plant them there. And oh, oops, mistake. I should have put them there. No, no, that's that's not the way God is. And so you've got to let God plant you. Now, can I just say ultimately, God is going to plant you where you 
will flourish and become a tree because that's God's will for your life. Who believes that? And you have to trust Him with that. And so I, it's all very well to say you've got to get planted in the house of the Lord, but I'm always asking myself the question, is this a house that will enable people to flourish? Is this house a plantation of flourishing, growing, healthy plants? How many think that's a good question to ask myself? You see, healthy plants don't just happen by themselves. It just doesn't happen by good luck and it just doesn't happen by fluke. The the farmer and the flamer, the flamer is a little bit like a farmer. (laughs) The farmer... Doesn't fluke a healthy crop. <laughs> the farmer, oh goodness me, the farmer. <laughs> oh, dear, we're in trouble. <laughs> Listen carefully, just like I'm concentrating here this morning. The farmer doesn't fluke a healthy crop. That's called agriculture. I went to Toowoomba during September when the Carnival of, Carnival of Flowers were on. And it's magnificent. Anyone ever been to the Carnival of Flowers in Toowoomba? The gardens are magnificent. The floral displays are immaculate. They are incredible. Let me tell you, that doesn't happen by fluke. That happens by floriculture. Am I doing well? Blooming marvellous, absolutely. You're still on my thunder, be quiet. <laughs> you go to a market garden or you go to an orchard and you see vegetables and you see trees producing fruit. That's not a fluke, that's called horticulture. So, there's a science attached to it. There's a process used to develop the fruit planted and, and to get the fruit and the flowers that they want. So we've got agriculture, we've got floriculture, we've got horticulture. The culture is significant to the outcome. Who believes that? And so it is with growing healthy plants in the house of the Lord. The culture of the house is incredibly important because how many know every house has different cultures? And so the culture of the house you get planted in is significant as to how well the plant will flourish and grow. You can have all the vision and the prayer in the world. You can have 10 weeks of prayer and fasting throughout the year and you can put forward as much vision if you like but if your culture is small if it is little if it is limiting if it is it is if it is toxic let me tell you the culture will trump vision every day how many know that culture is important so what's the culture of a church what should it do what should the culture of a church is this just about choice and personal preference and well let me tell you what the culture of the church actually is some One actually gives us a bit of an idea, because once again, it talks about a tree. Listen to what it says in Psalm 1, verse 3. Again, it's talking about the person who meditates on the law of the Lord, who meditates on the Word of God. It says, he is like a tree, planted by what? Streams of water. Another version says, planted by a river. A tree doesn't need a river to grow. It just needs a bit of water. But it means when you're planted, there's actually, when you get planted, there's actually more than enough. There's more, it becomes a place of resource and source. In fact, you've got more than you know, more than enough for you to become all that you're destined to be when you're planted by the river. Who can see that today? And so as a church, we want to be the kind of church that brings life. We're a life-giving church. There's sustenance, there's nutrients, there's enough for you to grow. Hello? Goes on. Let me just read the rest of that little section. It says, he's like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. Its fruit, not someone else's fruit. And in its season, not someone else's season. We don't have to be jealous of other people's fruit. We don't have to be jealous of the season that someone's in in their life. Because in time, if you're planted, you're going to produce your fruit in your season. You've just got to be planted by the river. Planted... And, and, and that's what the house of the Lord, being planted by the house of the Lord means. If you are planted in your season, your fruit in time. 
And then it goes on, it says, you shall not wither. Whose leaf does not wither. That means you're going to have, you're going to stop losing stuff. That sounds like a good place to be planted by, what do you say? So for me, that tells me what the house of the Lord, being planted by the house of the Lord should buy, should be like being planted by a river, where a life-giving place, where a life-giving centre, where there's enough for you to grow and flourish and to bear your fruit in your season and you shall not wither. Do you know, incidentally, your life has a culture. (laughs) It's the little things that you do and don't do. It's your disciplines, it's your priorities, it's what you say, it's your commitments and your habits. And sometimes the culture of our life undermines the tree that God wants us to become. That's another story. But so you, I'm saying all that to say this, you've got to let God plant you. That, that's, there's submission in that. There's a recognition that God's hand is at work and he's going to plant you in a house which will enable you to flourish. It's going to be like being planted by a river. You're going to bear fruit. You're getting this this morning. So let God plant you. Number two, let God join you. Let God join you. The word, those that are planted in the house, the word house literally is baith, which means family. It means family. Those that are planted in the family. Bible says he sets solitary in families. In the natural, a birth implies a relationship. Am I right? We had the talk last week, so we should be able to understand it this week. A birth implies a relationship. You are here as a result of a relationship. And you were born into a family, correct? It might have been dysfunctional, it might have broken up, but you and I, we come through the pattern of a family, correct? Correct? In the natural, anyone born of my father is my brother or my sister. They are family. In the spiritual, if anyone is born of my heavenly father, I'm his brother, I'm her brother. And so just as in the natural, we're born into a family, we are born and God places us into a family. Well, people might say, well, I belong to the... Absolutely, Pastor. I belong to the family of God, and there's a family of God all over the world. You know what? That is very true. And it's a part of this picture. However, I can say to you this morning I belong to the human family. I belong to the human family in every nation of the earth. Is that true? But I tell you what, I can identify my family. And God places you into an identifiable family. It's called the local church. In fact, not to have a spiritual family is akin to being a spiritual orphan. And so God places you into a spiritual family. And you know what? I just don't attend my family. I attend my family. I'm connected to my family. I'm joined to my family. My roots go deep. I can identify my spiritual family. I'm planted. My roots are established in the soil and they're not easily removed. You know what? That's why sometimes when circumstances in life happen, sometimes it's a very hard thing to be taken out of where you've been planted. And as I said, it doesn't happen often, it doesn't happen all the time, but the word for plant is shorthal, which literally means plant or transplant. God has the capacity to plant you, but he also has the capacity to transplant you. He can still cause you to grow and flourish even if you're a transplant. How many of you know that's good news? You need to know that this morning. So, you've got to let God join you. You see, um, 
I guess a, another example would be it's possible to be planted in the house and it sort of looks a bit like this. How many of you know there's a big difference between that and that? Who can see? Everyone see? I know you can on the front row. <laughs> can you see from the back? You see, putting a pot inside a big garden is not going to enable the roots to go down, right? And uh, you can say, well, I'm planted in the garden. I'm planted. I'm planted in the house. I might look okay. That looks okay, doesn't it? Um, I can tell you now, you're not benefiting from the soil and you are very easily removed. That's good, isn't it? I was impressed when I came up with that. <laughs> Here's the thing. There has to be a meaningful, meaningful connection to the body for you to benefit as the plant for in order for you to become the tree who's with me. So you've got to be committed to building relationships because that is what it's about. The church is not just a form and a structure. It's about the body. It's about a family and it's about relationship. Oh, that's hard. I know. But that's what the, we, that's what the church is about. It's about being planted. It's about you know, and the New Testament church, they understood this. In Acts 2, it talks about them, about verse 43, I think it is. It says, and they met in the temple courts and they met house to house. It was like the two wings of the one bird. A lot of churches are just kind of like one-winged birds. It's all about the temple worship, if you like. And it's kind of like the house to house bit's kind of like, you know, small groups things. It's kind of like, well, if that's your thing, but no, I'm just like a big church kind of a guy. I just say a one-winged bird never gets too far off the ground. Sorry, changing analogies a little bit here, but you get the picture. And so they met in the temple courts. That's corporate. That's where the scriptures are taught. That's public worship. That's where you serve and there's structure and there's, there, there, there's, there's God big and God majestic and it's all of that. It's different. But then there's house to house. That's all about God small. That's about relationship. That's about participation on a different kind of a level that's about encouragement that's about having people pray with you that's about you being able to pray for other people that's about friendship that's about food that's about fun together laughter crying together that's about that takes time but I tell you that's what we were made for you can't short circuit relationship you have to invest time in it you have to You see, we were designed for interchange, for social interaction. We were designed for that. It stimulates the brain. It stimulates the emotions, sometimes hard up and sometimes down. It, sti it, it gives you responsibilities. There's an interaction that gets you moving. It gets you in places sometimes where you wouldn't normally be. It gets you out and about. It challenges you, stimulates your thinking. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's not just sitting home with me and my thoughts and my TV and just I'm, I've just got my TV church. And TV church, nothing wrong with TV church. TV church is great. And for people that can't do anything but that, God bless you for taking the time to do that. But for goodness sake, understand that that's not God's intention for the church. He's designed us for social, social interaction. It's not good that one of the... In fact, one of the first things, the first problem that God saw with... The, the first problem in the Bible wasn't sin. The first problem that God observed was, oh my goodness, it's not good for man to dwell alone. That's the very first problem that God identifies. Isolation is not good for us. We were designed to be in the presence of others, and we're designed to be in the presence corporately, and we're designed to be in the presence of others in a small group. Who's hearing me this morning? Are you prepared to let down your defenses today and try again? Because I tell you, there's nothing like being in a relationship with other people that will cause you to grow. Grow. So today I want to encourage you to put your roots down. 
it's essential for us to flourish. And I've always wanted to lead a church that's not just about getting people into rows, but it's about getting people into circles. As church grows bigger, it has to get... I want to be a small church with lots of people. How about that? So today, I encourage you to put your roots down. You've got the opportunity to do that today. We've got, it's, it's Kickstart Sunday where life groups are beginning and uh, I want to encourage you to get involved in a life group. And it might take a little while and you don't have to, but, but just make that a part of, you see, life is not just a walk. There's a difference between a, a walk and a pilgrimage. A pilgrimage is intentional, it's going somewhere. You're on your way to being a tree. If you just want to go for a walk, okay, we'll go for a walk. Meander, meander, we'll... But if your life is a pilgrimage, if you want your life to go somewhere, you've got to make some decisions along the way to say, hey, I've got to put myself in the place where God is going to grow me. And part of that plan and purpose for you in your life is to put yourself in the, into the position of having relationships with people in a small group context. Who wants their life to be a pilgrimage and not just a walk? There's an intentionality. I don't know where that come from, but it come in from somewhere. So, unashamedly, I, I want to encourage you, people, all of you, not to be this. Oh, I'm a part. We can do this on Sunday. We can. We can do this one on Sunday. I'm a part of Set Point Church. Look at me. I'm a part of... You know what I'm saying. But for this, it takes a bit more, doesn't it? So come on, let's be a part of a life group. We've got a number of life group leaders here today in this service. We've got any life group leaders? Stand up if you're a life group leader. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Fint, wow, look at this. Come on, give him a big hand. I tell you. Maybe God's putting it in your heart to become a life group leader. We'll, we'll help you get there. It's not, it's not hard. You just need to be available. But God's called all of us, whether it's to lead or to be in, but God's called us to be part of a life group. And Donnelly here, this fine young lady here, young, young, young lady, this fine young sapling here, she's leading our life group charge, if you like, our, our life group ministry and if you want to be involved in it she's the lady to talk to but what's going to happen at the end of the service is these guys they're all got their little lanyards on look at their pretty lanyard all got their lanyards on they're going to be milling around up the end and they're going to mug you on the way out now they're, they're, they're just there making themselves available um, if you want to be involved in a life group have a chat to them and it might take a little while to find where you fit and whatever and, and again as I said some of you may become life group leaders there's a place that you can go ahead and take a seat but in fact no 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 stay standing for a minute I didn't ask you to sit down but I told you after they all sat down stand up just for a moment I want to I want to pray for you come on reach your hand out towards them father we pray for our life group leaders people that have made themselves available father I thank you that birds can come and find rest in their branches but father i pray as they as they facilitate as they make room for others to connect and be a part of it father i'm praying for your blessing for your grace to be upon them thank you for these people Lord, that are willing to lead life groups and father i'm praying for many more praying as people come in and as this church grows and people look to find a place where they can fellowship and, and have meaningful relationships. Father, I'm praying there'll be many more leaders that, are, that, that grow out of this house, Lord, that people can find themselves not only in the big, but they can find themselves in the small, that we would make room, that people wouldn't only be in rows, but they can be in circles and have relationships, I pray in Jesus' name. Because, Father, ultimately, you want us to become trees. So, Father, bless every life group leader as they give out that you would pour back in. Lord, as they make sacrifices, that you would reward them for their labor, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can take a seat. You've got to let God plant you. Moving on quickly, let God grow, uh, sorry, let God join you. And then let God use you. Let God use you. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall what? Flourish. Do you know what it means? It means break forth like a bud. It means thrive. Tell me if you want any of these 
is adjectives, as I say them. It means thrive. It means develop. It means grow. It means advance. It means prosper. It means succeed. It means fruitful. And yes, it means bloom. Welcome to Bloomin' Church. How many, we changed our name, Bloomin' Church. How many of you think we need a Bloomin' Church? Have you been to Bloomin' Church lately? My mother would be rolling in her grave. Russell. Sounds coarse. In its context, it's quite, quite good. Who wants to be a part of a Bloomin' Church? Absolutely. You see, if you're planted in the kind of house that's like being planted beside a river, it's not going to take away from you, it's going to add to you. You are going to thrive, you're going to flourish, you're going to grow, you're going to advance, you're going to prosper, you're going to bloom. Can I just say that's been my experience. I'm so glad that my mum and dad understood this. I was fortunate enough, and not all of you were, but I was fortunate enough to have a mum and dad who were planted in a church. Was it always easy? No. Was it always, was it always trouble-free? No. But I'm thankful that my mum and dad didn't just kind of like whoop, 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 all around the place whenever things weren't quite. They knew what it meant to be planted in the house of the Lord. And I grew up knowing what it meant. It was the pattern that was sent for my life. And I'm so thankful and I understand that I owe that to them. I'm resting in the branches of their tree. I'm benefiting from the branches of their tree. I'm finding shade in the benefit of their tree, in the tree that other people planted. I was a recipient of, right? Then I went to Melbourne and I was in a church called, wait for it, Faithland. Going to go to Faithland, Faithland. I went to Faithland. I was in Faithland for years and I planted myself there. I was a young man, moved to Melbourne and there was lots of churches in Melbourne and there was lots of pretty girls in churches all around Melbourne. But I planted myself... I planted myself in Faithland Christian Church and there I grew, there I started to serve, there I got involved, I became a giver, I planted myself, I sowed back into that church and let, do you know what, through that as I sowed into that church, as I served in that church, as I grew in that church, I started to grow and be, started to become a little bit of the tree that God wants my life to become by being planted in a church. Would not have happened, I tell you now, it would not have happened unless I knew how to plant myself in a church. Then I went to Bible College, otherwise known as Bridal College. And there a lot of the students, kind of like they were studying and they would go to all different churches all the time and, and, and never actually plant themselves during their colleges in a church. I planted myself in a local church called Lithgow, in a town called Lithgow, lovely Lithgow. And for the three years I was in Bible college, I planted myself and sowed myself and served in that church. I met Nikki while I was at college, at Bridal, Bridal College. We got married and we lived in, the, in one of the houses, the church manse that the church owned. Woohoo! And we served in the church. And we thrived. And we grew. And so on and so on. I'm not just saying that because I'm the pastor of a church. It's, where, it's the reason why God grew me to where he grew me today. I don't know I'm not saying being a pastor is the old one. I'm not saying that for a moment. But the same principle applies to you no matter what God has called you to or for, whether it's business or, or whether, it's, whether it's whatever it is, you'll thrive and you'll bloom when you are planted in the house of God. Does anyone believe that today? I'm believing for a plantation. Absolutely. Who wants this church to become a plantation? It's not just a few lone plants, but we're a plantation. I'm believing that you will flourish. I'm believing, I'm telling you this morning, as the pastor of this church, I'm praying and believing that you will flourish, that you will be fruitful people in every dimension of your life. Listen to the last verse of Psalm 92 verse 14. Listen to what it says. It says, and they will bear fruit in old age. <laughs> Come on, you seniors. There's no excuse. This is not a young people's thing. This is not a middle-aged thing. This is right through to old age, just before they carry you out in a box. Are you hearing me? I'm believing today that our seniors will flourish and thrive and be some, some of the most fruitful years will be in their older years. They're, they're going to fruitful even. I love the way it says it. They will stay fresh and they will bear fruit in old age. One version says, oh, even, in old, even in old age, 
they will stay fresh and green. Do we have any fresh old people today? It is Valentine's Day after all. They will stay, they will stay fresh. Oh, come on now, you know what I'm saying. They will stay fresh <laughs> and green. Do we have any fresh and green seniors out there today? Come on. In fact, one of the churches I was involved in called their, their seniors ministry, the Evergreens. Now I know why. I can never figure it out, but now I know why. Hey, that's the kind of church I'm believing for. Still an old age, still have a twinkle in their eye, still have a sense of humor. Why? Because they're, they're not kind of just living back here and they're not just, they haven't grown into dry old sticks and a few little withered old kind. No, 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 no. They're, they're fresh and they're vibrant because they're planted in the house and in this house beside the river, they're going to flourish, they're going to grow and they're going to prosper right through to our old age. Come on now. Who wants to be a part of a blooming church? I think we've got the message. Doesn't happen. Remember the culture words. Doesn't happen by flu. I want this culture in this house to be a culture of small groups, a culture of serving, a culture of man. We we get we get the kind of church which we this is this that, that we actually cause and help it to become as we plant, as we sow, as we sow back into it, as we give our lives to it. The church becomes through culture what it was destined to become. I think I'll join this church. You should. Jump on a team. Let's make church great. If you're not on a team yet, you know, it's so easy just to rest in the branches of other people's sowing and growing and planting. It's time some of you stop doing this and did this. Jump on a team once a month, or whatever. Just, just jump on a team. Make lighten the load for some. See Georgia, Georgia. Where's Georgia? Hey Georgia, see Georgia. She'd love to get you. In. And I tell you, rather than just one or two or three or four, let, let's get involved on a team. Get involved in a small group. I tell you what, it's all about you becoming a tree. It's not for my sake, but it's for the kingdom of God's sake, and it's for your sake. And God will grow you. Receive the word this morning. It's time just to stop resting in other people's branches. Seriously. Let's become the branch. Let God make you a tree. Who's finding rest in your branches? Who's finding help from you? Maybe you're just a seed at the moment. It's okay. Nothing wrong with being a seed. Maybe you're just a little seedling or a little... But hey, get yourself planted. And before you know it, we're going to have a tree popping out of this thing. Who believes that? We're going to have a plantation. Father, let your word lodge itself in our hearts today. Let the seed of this word... As the word goes forward, as broadcast, Father, I pray that our lives would be good soil. Let that seed take root this morning. That we might become the planting of the Lord, that we might become trees of righteousness, that the birds and others may find rest and security in our branches today. Father, this morning we're worshipping in the branches of someone else's planting. We're living in the goodness and branches of other peoples, the generations before their planting. Father, help us to carry that through and help, help us to let this church, this house, to become the house that it was destined to be as we plant, as we sow. And in doing so, Father, we're going to grow. We're going to become the trees. In Jesus' name. Receive the word? Amen. Amen. Just before we go this morning, while every head's bowed, every eye's closed, is the kingdom of God within you? Have you received Jesus into your life, the eternal seed? Have you been born again? You're born first physically, but when you ask Jesus into your life, you're born again spiritually. It's what you were made for. 
Jesus wants to come into your life. He wants to grow you into his likeness. The kingdom of God is within you. is going to grow. But it comes by putting your faith and trust in Jesus. Say, Jesus, I put my trust in you today. I want my life to be right with you today. I thank you that you died on the cross for my sin. I humble myself. I ask you to come into my life. Is there anyone here today that's never settled the issue with with God and said, I believe in Jesus? You might have been coming to this church for a long time, but you've still never personally put your trust in Jesus. Maybe it's your mum and dad's trust or your wife or your husband's trust. Or, but today, if you personally put your trust in Jesus, said, Jesus, I believe in you. I cannot be saved without you. Come into my life. Is anyone just here while we're here? Head bowed, eye closed. Just simply raise your hand and say, yeah, that's me, Russell. I want Jesus to come into my life. Just raise your hand. I just want to give you that opportunity. Thank you, Lord. Can I just encourage you this morning, be patient with the seed that's inside you. God will grow it. Just stay planted. Just stay planted. He'll grow it. But I'm, when I say planted, I don't mean planted in a pot. I mean planted. And let the nutrients of this house grow you and mature you. And just one other question as we bring the service to a close. What's flourishing in your life? Can I just say something is flourishing in your life? Sometimes the wrong things can flourish in our life because we water and feed the wrong things. And maybe some of you need to change the fruit. If you want to change the fruit of your life, you need to change the culture of your life, your words, what you think. Maybe your life is a culture of not trusting God and putting Him first. Maybe... You need to change your culture. Maybe you trust God at the back end of your life, but not at the front end. God, I trust you for when I die. I trust you for heaven, but I don't trust you in the front end of my life. I don't trust you with things that you've given me control over now. I don't really trust you. Maybe you don't trust him in your finances. Maybe you don't trust him with your time. Or maybe you don't trust, you just don't trust him. I want to encourage you to change that this morning. Cultivate it. Cultivate trust. Cultivate faith. And it'll grow you, watch it, grow you into what God's called you to be. Receive that word this morning. Father, I pray that that would land where it needs to land this morning. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.